Hello there. Today I'm tasting a classic Sauvignon Blanc based wine from France's Loire Valley. So this is a bottle of Henri Bourgeois 2021 um, Les Barons um, Sancerre. The Bourgeois family claim 10 generations of heritage um, making wine in the little town of Chavignol. Uh, Chavignol is one of 13 uh, villages entitled to the Sancerre Appellation and it's um, fairly close to Sancerre but to the northeast um, and between Sancerre and Chavignol there's a terroir of um, broken hills and ridges with um, a classic um, uh, marl soils with sort of a combination of um, clay and limestone that help build the style of the wines here. Um, Henri Bourgeois um, in the 50s um, developed, did most to develop the, the domain. He, when he started working, there were seven, uh, sorry, there were two hectares of vines. Today, the family, his grandchildren, uh, run a domain of 72 um, hectares, uh, over 120 plots, I should add, as well. So it's a fairly complex operation for, um, for its size. Um, Bourgeois and his sons worked very hard to identify some of the best terroirs in the area. When, when he started out, Chavignol was a little bit of a sort of a sancerre backwater. Um, and he did a lot to identify some of the best terroirs and um, was a pioneer of the production of um, single vineyard sancerres. So, um, I mean, today one of the uh, domain's top vineyards is the um, uh, Cote de Mondons. Um, and uh, uh, they make quite a, a wide range of, of wines. They've also sort of diversified um, into some of the other areas of the Loire where um, uh, Sauvignon Blanc is, is grown. They have um, vines in um, Pouli Fume, um, they have vines in um, Monotou Salon, in the Cote de Genoire, um, and in Quincy. Um, also growing, as well as Sauvignon Blanc and Pinot Noir, there's a little bit of Cabernet Franc grown, and in fact they make some Van de Loire um, sort of wines. Um, and um, more recently, um, there's a very successful uh, wine producing operation, so probably going for about 20 years now, um, in uh, Marlborough in New Zealand, um, where they make wines under the, the Henri, Bo the Clo Henri um, name. Um, uh, in terms of the uh, vineyard practices, they, they, they practice sustainable um, viticulture in, in that they, they're just using organic fertilizers, they grass down between the rows, so you know, um, everything is hand picked, for instance. Um, as far as winemaking is concerned, the, the, the wines are quite simply made. Um, they are fermented in uh, temperature controlled stainless steel tanks. Um, and will go into the cold underground cellars that they have sort of cut into the um, earth um, where everything is gravity fed. And they, they'll age there with their fine leaves for five months, just gaining a little bit of richness. Um, but the wines are bottled quite young. Um, what else to say? Oh, the Les Barons is, it's not a single vineyard wine. It's it's a wine that I believe is, is made from fruit for an, a number of um, different sites. Um, but in terms of trying to be sort of typical of a, a, you know, a good entry-level Sancerre for, for people to, um, to experience the, the style of the Appellation. Um, the soil types they describe as being about sort of 65% clay and about 35% limestone um, or chalk. Um, and um, it's worth saying the, the, the soils in this area, the chalk soils, are very much well, they, they are related to the soils that you find in uh, Chablis, Champagne, and, and the North Downs. There's a geological feature called the Paris Basin, whereby, with Paris as its centre, there's a sort of a shallow depression of chalk, so it's quite deep under the ground in Paris, and its edges come up, as I say, in those sort of classic wine-producing regions um, of Champagne, Chablis, and Sancerre. So, yeah, Sancerre, we're um, south of Paris, um, South, a little slightly southeast of Paris, in fact. Um, but again, the, the, um, 
winemakers argue that those same soils are what are found in, in um, England's South Downs, which is why they make an argument that that, that could potentially be a, a, a very good place to be growing um, dry white wines and sparkling wines as well. Um, so um, the, the reason for talking about the, the soil types, I think, is, is that because it depends on the sort of soils that, that you're working on. I mean, yeah, marl is a mixture of both of them. But the, the clay will retain um, water and will make the vine more vigorous. So um, uh, vines that are on more clayey soils will be more vigorous and will produce a more fruity sort of style of wine. Whereas those um, vines that are on the more um, limestone, um, chalky soils, uh, will tend to be more refined and more elegant because the chalk holds back water um, more more readily, and so the, those uh, the vine is less vigorous, um, and you tend to get more elegant and refined styles, more crisp, uh, leaner notes from those. So the combination of the two is quite a nice um, uh, sort of style for a, a wine of this sort. So let's have a look at the wine, shall we? Um, I mean, the looking at the colour. It's a pale, uh, lemony yellow, swirling it. Um, there's not a particularly sort of viscous note to the wine. It's um, it's not particularly clinging, clinging to the glass. The alcohol is is noted on the the label as being thirteen percent, so not particularly high, um, and it should be a dry wine. The aromas. The aromas are fresh and they're they're reflecting the fermentation going on in a temperature reg regulated um, uh, tank. They, they talk about the the temperature being between 16 and 18 degrees C. So that is to stop the fermentation going too quickly. It stops the delicate perfumes of the fruit uh, from boiling off. Um, but it, it it's warm enough that you're not getting sort of estuary notes of sort of um, uh, pear drops, that sort of slightly confected sort of note. You should just be getting the, the fruit aromas. And what we're getting here is there are fruity greens, um, sorry, grassy green top notes over a quite a lean, quite but quite pronounced passion fruit note. It's, it, it's very distinctive actually. Um, Maybe a touch of gooseberry in there as well, but those are all the same sort of flavour compounds, I believe, that uh, are revealed in Sauvignon Blanc during fermentation. So let's have a taste. The wine is dry and crisp. And that crispness is quite—it's mm, quite tart. Um, it's that sort of unripe apple sharpness that shows that the um, wine hasn't gone through a malolactic conversion that would be standard you wouldn't normally put Sauvignon Blanc through malolactic conversion because you want to keep the fresh aromatics that the process of uh, malolactic conversion malolactic fermentation will sort of um, will dumb down it will um, put other flavors over the top of that so again you've got that sort of grassy note there's slightly more of the gooseberry and slightly less of the passion fruit actually on the palate but the um, uh, passion fruit notes are certainly there. The wine is quite light bodied. Um, there isn't any particular um, tannin or anything like that to it, so um, you wouldn't expect any extraction really. But there are lazy notes. There's a sort of a slight, a slight dairy touch on the finish, a slightly creamy note, I suppose. Um, but also there's good citric freshness, that um, acidity, the, the initial sharpness was more front of mouth. Later on the finish you've got that more sort of citric, maybe slightly towards a grapefruit um, note, lemony to grapefruit note there. And my mouth is still watering at the end of the, the wine, which is leaving it nice and clean. It's leaving the delicate fruit flavours quite long. This is. You know, this is a straight down the line Sauvignon Blanc. This is exactly the way you want it. Um, there's more of the rounded fruit, not a huge amount of the sort of the minerality that you might get with them. a wine from soils with more chalk in. That sort of thing. Okay, there is a, 
a lean mineral aspect, but it's, it's um, balanced by the fruit in there. So um, as far as the alcohol is concerned, that's not overpowering the fruit either. Everything's nicely in balance. Um, the wine is a couple of years old, 2021. Um, it's not seeming at all tired. Um, it might um, might very happily hold on for another couple of years, but I, I would always encourage uh, drinking a wine like this to, um, at this quality level um, within a couple of years of, of vintage because it, it's it's probably not going to improve much as its its main virtue is its beautiful freshness and those lovely clean fruit fruit notes that are coming through there. So um, yes, that's uh, Henri Bourgeois um, Les Barons Sancerre. 2021. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you find these videos interesting. Do please um, follow our YouTube channel. Um, do like, share, comment on the videos and uh, most importantly do join us again. Bye now.